I was sure that God wouldn't forgive me. I, I was sure of it. I, I was almost to the point where I thought that I had done worse than John did. John was a crack addict. I would do anything. I would have done anything and did do things that I am not proud of, I knew were wrong, just to keep him in the house, just to keep him around, just to keep him alive. To keep him off of crack, I offered to, you know, buy like marijuana instead so that um, he would have something, just something to keep him in the house so that I wouldn't have to go and look him up in another crack house. We were deep in crisis. We were about, um, yeah, we were at the bottom. The boys, I, I made them grow up way too soon, and I, I allowed them to see and hear and experience things that children should never, never experience. It was a week before, the week that John went missing, I had found our car so I knew where John was, and my oldest son, John David, went with me and he waited in the car while I went in to get his dad. I just remember getting out of the car and turning around and looking at my son. And he was sitting there with a baseball bat on a horrible part of town. And I'm walking up to a crack house at like two o'clock in the morning and I just thought, what is wrong with me? What kind of mother am I that I have exposed him to this? That was when John went missing for the week. And in that week, our car was stolen. All the money that was in it was stolen. John was missing. At the same time, he also had a heart condition that, um, you know, we knew that he could die at any time. The, the Friday night before, I, before we came to fellowship, I had actually put, contacted the police and put out a missing person, or person report for John. He'd been gone for a week, and he was gone frequently, but never for that long. Um, I went to all the places that I normally went to, the crack houses I normally went to, the friends I normally went to see, and no one had seen him. No one knew anything. Um, then all of a sudden on Saturday morning, he appeared by phone, and I got a hold of Donnie Lytle. John and I had known Donnie since high school, so it helped that Donnie knew history. I called Donnie and asked Donnie if he could help us. So I went to the crack house where John was and got him out of there, got him home safely. Donnie came over and prayed with us and we came to church on Sunday morning. I did grow up in a Christian home. Um, we went to church every Sunday and my father was um, deacon in the church. And I just fell away from that when I got into my teenage years and started dating John and completely fell away from it. And I was positive when we walked through the doors of fellowship that someone would be able to look at my face and know the things I'd done and tell me to leave. I was sure of it. What helped me the most was just the, even that first morning here at fellowship and walking through those doors and seeing how welcome we were and people didn't even know us and we were invited to three different Bible study groups that very first Sunday and I remember leaving and looking at John and saying they don't even know us they have no idea what is coming up this week because I I knew what was going to happen we came to church and it was going to be the same as every other week and that was my that was the start
knowing that there were people out there that it, it didn't matter. It, it, it didn't matter what was going on in your life. They, they wanted to pull us in. It is a huge thing to wake up in the morning and know that you're loved. And um, to know that, that God loves you and that I'm gonna try my best to do what would make him proud that day, but I'm gonna mess up. And when I mess up, it's gonna be okay. He'll still love me.